vienen Okay, so we're standing out here um, in front of Merrick Garland's house in Washington, D.C. Uh, with the D.C. action for Assange doing a vigil today. And uh, got the banners up here and everything. And, uh, that's the social, that's the uh, Secret Service. That's Merrick Garland's house over there. And, uh, so, and this is Brian. What's your last name, Brian? Um, Brian Fouché. And uh, so, like, uh, tell us what uh, brings you out here today. Yeah, so we've ha had this peace vigil going for, I think, over a year now and different actions in D.C. Um, trying to ensure that Julian Assange is freed. Um, we have people um, with kind of different um, perspectives and different uh, kind of stances, but uh, a lot of people support Assange because of uh, freedom of the press and also um, kind of the anti-war, um, peaceful um, peacefulness because of the information that he revealed about uh, war crimes. Um, so we have this peace vigil just to raise awareness um, to hopefully have Assange released so he can uh, be with his family as he's uh, done nothing wrong. Everything he's done has been uh, very moral, just showing the truth uh, to people. Yeah. So there's new information now that the uh, Justice Department released in the last couple of days. Is that right? Um, yeah, we're hearing that um, it sounds like he may be extradited um, here, so um, we're still um, going to be here uh, raising awareness to try and get as much public support as we can. Uh, the more support from the public uh, we have for this, uh, the better the chances are that uh, Assange is uh, released. Yeah, so uh, I understand you've got a letter that yeah. you're going to give to the yeah, each, uh, we, do, we do the peace vigil twice a month and we always give a letter to Mayor Garland. So I'll just read a little bit um, from this letter. And one thing to highlight before I read this letter, um, this Tuesday, April 11th, um, outside the Department of Justice from 4 to 6 p.m., um, we'll be having uh, a, another rally vigil um, for uh, Assange to be released with several uh, speakers there as well. Um, so this is just some of the information that's in our letter to uh, Merrick Garland. Um, several important Julian Assange press freedom related events have happened since our last vigil. April 5th marked the 13th year anniversary of WikiLeaks publishing the collateral murder video. Um, and it's not surprising that Trump's Department of Justice did not uh, list a video in its indictment against Assange. If Paris thought Assange is brought to the U.S., the prosecution would not want to defend that horrific video in front of a jury. What is surprising is that your Department of Justice, Mr. Garland, has not dropped all the charges against this innocent publisher. Uh, April 11th will mark the four-year anniversary that the U.S. and U.K. trafficked Assange out of his political asylum in the Ecuadorian embassy against Ecuador's laws and all international laws and we'll be having action in D.C. and there'll be worldwide actions also in London, um, Edinburgh, Canberra, Mexico City, Toronto, and more. <clears throat> and on April 4th, the Press Freedom NGO Reporters Without Borders was denied visitation rights to meet with Julian Assange. Um, Pulitzer Prize winning uh, Glenn Greenwald writes, it's a bit hard to hand out lectures to the rest of the world about their abuse of journalists and be taken seriously when the U.S. and U.K. continue to do things like this. And, and even Australian PM Anthony Albanese before winning his election told Australians that enough is enough. I can't see what is served by keeping Julian Assange incarcerated. Um, so that's just 
kind of some excerpts from um, the letter. Um, there's a lot more in it with details and links uh, just so that Mayor Garland um, uh, and others are aware of all the news surrounding Assange and the support that he has uh, from the public. And, uh, and that's, that's what import, is important, that the uh, public supports uh, that Assange is free. Yeah. So, do you have any of the latest polls or anything, you know, how the public feels about it? I don't really have uh, any polls, but I do know um, that um, several members of Congress are starting to speak out uh, more freely uh, about uh, freeing Assange. Uh, in the you know, past couple years, we had very few that were kind of willing to tackle it and speak out uh, about this issue, but uh, we're, we're getting more support uh, from people in Congress, and I think a lot of that is because uh, the public, the constituents are bringing this issue up uh, and they're uh, here to um, you know, serve what their constituents um, want. So if that's what their constituents want, then um, it's, it's important that they kind of uh, go along with that as well. So we are seeing um, some traction um, in that regard. Great. Anything else to add? Um, yeah, I guess we've also the past few months been getting some more traction in more mainstream media as well, articles, Newsweek, New York Times, because a lot of times more independent outlets pick things up, um, but it's nice that, um, yeah, we're starting to see it more in the, the mainstream article, so um, that also means I think that uh, more people are waking up and learning about uh, what's happening with Assange and the reality behind it. Great. We'll, we'll be looking forward to this uh event that's coming up Tuesday. Yes, uh, Tuesday, April 11th, 4 to 6 p.m. at the Department of Justice in D.C. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Okay. We're here at the Pentagon, <clears throat> and uh, there's a vigil going on over here. Let's see what's going on. I'm Helen Jackard, the, uh, the project manager for the Golden Rule, a project of Veterans for Peace, who have tried their best to stop the possibility of war and nuclear war. We're here at the Pentagon today where all the workers are coming in to get started on their day of planning for the end of human, the human race by planning to bomb people and, you know, lie to people, produce the, the materials that are needed to, for full spectrum dominance by the United States of the whole world. And we think that's wrong. And so we also think that the workers, if they could get paid well to do peace work rather than war work, would probably take that opportunity. Because what, what they need to know is they're being lied to about what it is they're doing and why it is they're doing it, and they need to stop this and get other jobs. What if the Pentagon could find no workers? Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. So. Let's all stop working for war and start working for peace. We're here in the free speech zone at the Pentagon, and we have all the workers coming by, coming to work. Uh, some of them pay a little attention to us. One person even waved and kind of almost said hi. But in general, they just do their best to avoid eye contact with us, just like you would perhaps a homeless person or a beggar. Um, so. That's kind of what we represent to them, just somebody to ignore. But, you know, they need to know that we're here. They need to know that we're making this statement. Um, we've got a couple really good banners here, like milita militarism fuels the climate crisis, and you know, let's stop the possibility of nuclear war over Ukraine. So let's de-escalate that war uh, and bring about peace there. We need to respect everybody's security concerns. Uh, so, Helen Jackard, Cub Reporter for the Golden Rule, signing off. My name's Helen Sheetinger. 
And I'm really happy that the Golden Rule can join Dorothy Day Catholic Worker here. The Catholic Worker comes here every Monday morning to the Pentagon to say good morning to the workers who come into the building. And um, so it feels like a really good and important place for the Golden Rule to be here in Washington, D.C. on its transit of the Golden Loop. I'm Art Laffin with the uh, Dorothy Day Catholic Worker, and it's a, it's a great honor to have uh, with us uh, the uh, Golden Rule uh, uh, community, and uh, we stand with them all the way in the great work they're doing to uh, raise awareness, to call for the abolition of nuclear weapons and war. And uh, the Catholic Worker Vigil began here in 1987. Good morning. And, uh, Good morning. Every every Monday morning, uh, we're we're here to uh, really uh, call people to uphold God's command not to kill and to beat the swords of our time into plowshares. I have, uh, I have a banner here that says "Swords into Plowshares," taken from the prophets Isaiah and Micah. And uh, uh, I've also been part of the plowshares movement, where. Uh, uh, since 1980, uh, there have been over 100 actions uh, in the United States and worldwide where people of faith and conscience have gone into nuclear weapons facilities and military bases and enacted this, uh, this mandate of the prophets to literally beat the swords of our time into plowshares. And so we've hammered and uh, used other symbols to uh, actually begin the process of disarmament. Uh, I've been part of two actions uh, hammering uh, on the Trident submarine, and uh, um, that, 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 that I think has a, a direct connection with what the Golden Rule is trying to do too. You know, uh, the Trident is the ultimate first strike weapon of our time. Eighteen Tridents are deployed right now, uh, and uh, the the Pentagon uh, calls it its, its ultimate first strike weapon. Um, it's 560 feet long. That means it's five feet taller than the Washington Monument if you stood it straight up. And uh, back in uh, 1980, when the first Trident was built, um, it had 24 missiles with 17 individually targeted warheads per missile. So one Trident had 408 uh, nuclear warheads. And the Pentagon claimed uh, the, uh, uh, one of those missiles could travel 6,000 miles within a half hour and come within 300 feet of its target. And that's why it was billed as the ultimate first strike weapon. Uh, at a cost of uh, $2.5 billion a piece. The Navy wanted to build 30 and they ended up building 18. And so uh, uh, I was also part of the campaign in Connecticut uh, with others to uh, stop the Trident program, to call for the conversion of General Dynamics Electrical Shipyard to make uh, uh, hospital ships instead of uh, nuclear uh, warfighting submarines, and uh, to convert to uh, peace production. And so, anyway, there's uh, uh, there's a long uh, tradition of nonviolent resistance that we are all part of here at the Pentagon and elsewhere, and uh, we, uh, we do what we can here to uh, um, a appeal to the consciences and the hearts and minds of those who are working here and those who are in positions of power to say that we have to redirect all the money and resources that are being misused and wasted on weapons, war, and killing to meet urgent human needs. And uh, one time when I was in court, I, uh, I proposed to the judge, I said, uh, you know, we, we have a plan to convert the Pentagon. You know, it's not, you know, we're, we're, we're just not coming Good out morning. here to say no to war and killing and, and weapons of mass murder, but we're saying yes to life. And so there are five sides of the Pentagon. And what could those sides be used for? What could this building be used for? And so I, one of the things I said was, uh, well, one side could be used for uh, a center for uh, nonviolent conflict resolution training. And then another side could be uh, 
used for uh, uh, developing renewable uh, energy. And so we, 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 we stop polluting our planet, stop destroying our planet. Uh, another side could be uh, used uh, as a bakery to uh, feed, feed the poor of our world, literally. And then another side could be uh, uh, a, uh, a medical center where free uh, health care could be provided to uh, all those who are in need. Free health care. Um, anyway, that didn't go over very well with the judge. And I was still found guilty for uh, our action uh, that we did here uh, of praying and holding banners and uh, but anyway, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, uh, a gesture to say that we can convert and transform this center of war making on the planet to a center that serves life and meets human needs of people worldwide and that stops destroying our planet. Um, we, we have over 800 military bases worldwide. We're spending now uh, $858 billion on the war budget for this year. And the government wants more for next year. And uh, it's estimated uh, that since the Manhattan Project, the uh, United States has spent nearly $10 trillion on nuclear weapons production. $10 trillion. Think of how that money and resources could be used to alleviate poverty in our world. You know? And so um, this is, this is a... Uh, uh, um, a colossal crime uh, that needs to be addressed and repented for. We're the only country to have ever used nuclear weapons. And we have a policy right now which says we must be prepared to use nuclear weapons at any moment. Good morning, General. Please join with us. Join with the veterans for peace, abolish war and nuclear weapons. Thank you. That's a, a two-star general who uh, always greets us uh, and uh, you know we don't know we don't know uh, how he takes in what we're saying and doing but, but we do know he's paying attention and so what more can we do right we reach out in love and, and uh, conviction um, a couple years ago we had a uh, there was the vigil happened to, here happened to coincide with the birthday of the great peacemaker, uh, Father Daniel Berrigan, who, along with his brother Phil, uh, were arrested here at the Pentagon many times. Uh, they were the first Catholic priests that went to prison in the United States for opposing war. Uh, so anyway, uh, it was uh, Father Dan's birthday, and we had a, a, a cardboard cutout of uh, Dan Berrigan here with us. And so, uh, uh, we took the, uh, Frank and I who were here, uh, we, we took the uh, opportunity to ask people if they knew who Dan Berrigan is, was. And um, most people walked by and they said, no, we don't know, or they didn't pay any attention. As Helen was saying earlier, you know, they, a lot of people just walked by and they, 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 they don't want to associate with us. But some did. And uh, I asked the two-star general who just walked by, if he knew uh, about Father Daniel Berrigan. And he said, yes, he did. Okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, you never know. You never know. Uh, the Berrigans, uh, for those who don't uh, recall, were part of the uh, Catonsville Nine uh, action where they uh, uh, used homemade napalm to burn draft files, destroy their draft files in Catonsville, Maryland. Uh, on May, uh, uh, 17th, uh, 1968, to oppose the uh, uh, U.S. involvement in Vietnam. And uh, they were also part of the first Plowshares action, the Plowshares 8, that uh, happened in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania in 1980. Um, and so we were, we're here on this glorious morning uh, to say yes to life no to uh, all that threatens life and to stand with uh, all those worldwide who are calling for the abolition of war, the abolition of nuclear weapons, killer drones, and all weapons of killing. 
and to uh, redirect those all the resources uh, that are being spent on weapons in the war to meet human needs. Dr. King had it right. Uh, he, he said, uh, the choice before us is no longer between violence and nonviolence. It's nonviolence or non-existence. And, and that's where we are right now. 90 seconds to midnight. Uh, that's the time on the uh, doomsday clock that the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists have determined given the, uh, the state of the world at this moment. And uh, we have to do everything we can to, uh, to change that and to uh, um, work for uh, nonviolence, justice, and peace in our world. Down by the riverside, down by the riverside, down by the riverside, we're gonna lay down our sword and shield. Down by the riverside, gonna study war no more. So, what's your name? Steve. Steve Tolaney. Steve. So, uh, how long have you been doing this? Oh, at least five years. Huh. I was up at the White House for at least ten years. I was against the war in Afghanistan because I'm pro-Palestinian. I see. So, that's... You ever get any harassment or anything from the uh, authorities? Not really. I've gotten harassment from other people. You disagree with me. But, you know, it's nothing serious. I got hit in the face one time and he didn't hurt. So, but this this is the uh, the west side of the Pentagon here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what's your name? Yeah, Kathy Boylan. I'm with the Catholic Worker. Oh, I see. So why do you say no war with Russia? Well, I say no war with anyone. Yeah. Uh, we should not have war. We must abolish war, or war will, as Dr. Said, Dr. King said, it's either non-violence or non-existence, given the, the kinds of weapons we have in the world. But on this one, uh, we have provoked Russia uh, with our, you know, moving the NATO bases eastward from Germany after promising not to. We uh, uh, orchestrated a coup in uh, Ukraine in 2014. Our soldiers trained the Ukrainian soldiers after that, many of whom are Nazis. And uh, they went and uh, killed 14,000 Russian-speaking um, Ukrainians in eastern Ukraine. And the United States has stationed our nuclear weapons in Turkey. There are 50 nuclear weapons on Russia's border in Turkey. And by the way, they were just, they're stationed about miles, miles west of where Turkey's recent terrible earthquake in Turkey happened. Our nuclear weapons are right on, right, very close to that. Uh, remember, everyone, that the United States has our, we have our nuclear weapons in Turkey, Italy, Germany, Netherlands, and Belgium. It's the, uh, it's the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis in reverse. We wouldn't like it if the United States put their nuclear, if Russia put their nuclear weapons in Canada and Mexico. We wouldn't like that. We would be at war. That's exactly what has happened with Russia. We have threatened, provoked Russia. As we are provoking China right now, we are insane. And so I am, I am, I, I understand Russia. I oppose war. I understand what Russia is doing. We have caused it. I, and our tax dollars are paying for it. So I always encourage people to refuse to pay their federal taxes as Dorothy Day did. So. That's it. Okay, thank right. you.